Welcome to Face to Face, and today we're going to talk about uh, Ginelle Assange. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the situation today, the campaign coming, and I'm with Randy Credico, uh, from a journalist from WBAI, who has been the main organizer of the campaign in New York and maybe in the US. So, Randy, welcome to Face to Face. It's nice to be here, even though my face doesn't look so good today. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but now so, in the cold weather. Yeah, so I know it's deadly. Here. I'm not um, used to it. What? Um, so maybe you can tell us what you do with WBI or uh, what type of, um, and then we go. We will go through the Assange situation. Oh, well, I I, um, I host a, a radio show there once or twice a week, uh, also on the Progressive Radio Network, um, PRN, on Mondays. Uh, so I had a special show on Wednesday. Uh, on WBAI, uh, 6 p.m. live with the uh, Russian uh, uh, first deputy ambassador yeah. uh, to the uh, UN. Yeah. And of course, I'm getting all sorts of heat for that. So um, uh, it's amazing, uh, you know, the kind of uh, response I'm getting from. Uh, yeah, I know. Today, we just, I'm, I was just listening before uh, the Schroeder Institute did a, a day. Uh, a conference all day uh, about the situation in Ukraine and the Europe and and you know it, it's uh, but there's a lot of censorship on 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 um, anyone that has a different point of view than the official narrative yeah. and many people are blocked on social media. Exactly. Uh, as I want to go to that point later on into the discussion. All right. Okay. I, I yeah. So it. we'll talk about. I've had a show at WBAI for years and uh, it. Uh, it uh, the main program is Assange Countdown to Freedom, which I started with uh, Julian uh, Assange as a guest and uh, John Pilger, the um, redoubtable uh, great uh, journalist uh, uh -huh. from Australia. Uh -huh. um, and so those two were on uh, April 11th, 2017. Seventeen, so it's almost oh, been wow. six years. Yeah, uh, I've probably done three hundred shows. Yeah, uh, on it, uh, podcasts on WBAI, Progressive Radio Network, uh, also on Pacifica. Uh, it was there for uh, a while. Uh, KPFA. So uh, I've tried to keep it uh, going, and uh, early on, it was not easy because there was so much uh, animosity uh, towards uh, Julian Assange. And so we just kept at it and uh, people seem to have uh, come on board and uh, they've seen the light. And uh, so that, that, that is growing and, and, and we were able to get the information out there. Uh, and, um, you know, yeah. it's, it's been a struggle. It's not easy, but it's been a struggle. So what, but, what is the situation today? What is, so is, uh, is on the uh, extradition uh, process? Well, yes, he's, uh, I mean, we don't know. He's got another legal challenge happening. He's got uh, a lot of things uh, at his disposal uh, right now to prevent uh, an imminent, um, an imminent, uh, what do you call it, extradition. But, you know, he's been uh, in that uh, coincidentally on eight, since April 11, 2019. He's been in what would be a modern dungeon, you know. Yeah. Not so modern. I mean, it really is a dungeon. Terrible uh, conditions uh, psychologically and physically uh, being put through the ringer there. This precious individual with a, a brilliant mind and a, a uh, lovely soul, uh, a person that cares, a nonviolent individual uh, who's, who sits in a, in a 5,000 uh, cell block uh, that's noisy and Many of the uh, inmates there are, uh, you know, violent, you know, not all of them, but, uh, you know, he's yeah. the only one not convicted of anything that's in there. And you have no access to his family, to his wife, to his kid. No, a couple, he gets to see his wife for an hour, twice a week. It's pure torture. Uh, you know, he just sits in this room. He's unable to practice his craft. You know, it would be like Beethoven. Uh, cutting yeah. off his fingers or, you know, yeah. breaking his piano. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, taking away Tolstoy's pen, you know, so we, just um, it's a shame what's going on right now. And, and it has been. And it's a, it's a danger. It's a danger to all of us. 
uh, in this country, at least uh, in terms of uh, free expression and uh, free speech and and uh, freedom of press. So well, we just we just keep moving on. And, uh, you know, sometimes it seems like I'm repeating myself, but there's a, enough out there to get different angles. We've yeah. covered it from every everything that has been going on and a lot has been going on. Uh, and uh, we've, you know, we've had everybody on the show. We've had him on. We've had, we've had his wife on. We've had uh, Nils Melzer on many times. John Pilger, Craig Murray, you name it. We just uh, keep uh, no, I know you. <laughs> yeah, That's why I want to, I'm so proud to have you because you have really been a key. And we, I was at the rally not to, to a couple of weeks ago in front of the British Embassy. Um, yes, you were there at the, uh, yeah. And, I was expecting to get a call from you sooner. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's already been a month. <laughs> exactly. No, but I wanted to see about February to see what's happening in February um, and, and see what's going on with the... Uh, I know what's the, coming up. There's going to be uh, the, the film Ithaca, which was produced by his brother, Gabriel Shipton, uh, is uh, going to make a national tour. It's going to kick off a national tour. And I'm going to speak at some of them, like open up the... Uh, program great so that's going to start on february 11 or it's going to be i think so some something else is happening february february 11th <laughs> there's so many things going on yeah you know uh, right now that uh, it's hard to keep track of uh, it all okay so and something was a little bit uh, mentioned during the rally was the new york times and some of the mainstream media start to be now supporting so i just wanted to to take to have your take on, on that switch of what well yes well some you know they came out with this letter saying this is a dangerous precedent uh and, you know it was stronger than i thought they uh, would have uh, written and, and it's it's not too late but i wish they had done it years, years ago. ago yeah uh and more people would would jump on board uh you know we've waited a long time and he uh, hasn't committed any crime, and yet he is in this uh, godforsaken uh, situation, this unhealthy, psychologically and physically unhealthy uh, prison uh, with, with, with bogus charges. These charges, the Espionage Act was written in 1917, uh, basically to suppress dissent, anyone who was anti-war. Uh, Americans did not want to go to war. They were isolationists. They didn't want to uh, engage in the bloodbath in the trenches of Europe, uh, you know, in France and in Belgium, they didn't want to participate in that because it, that's all it was, was a slaughter. And so they had to um, do what they could. This was not, you know, of the 2000 people who were convicted under the Espionage Act, only three were German uh, so-called spies or whatever, minor charges. The rest were, were anti-war, anti-war. Uh, you know, so it was and, some kind of disobedience on civil disobedience. Uh, everyone knew. Everyone knew that the law was written. All the congressmen knew it had nothing to do with uh, ferreting out, uh, uh, you know, spies and you know, secret agents. It was it was written with a wink and a nod and signed and passed uh, by Congress for that specific reason of uh, suppressing dissent. Now it's being used. Uh, to suppress uh, journalism. And so what, what are, I mean, if we have no, I, some ideas of what are going to be the next step for Assange? I mean, what bes besides the next well, step? Well, he's got, he's got, he, he's still got, uh, you know, options here. The, the, the um, underlining uh, conviction by the judge, a single judge in the case, deciding that it was okay to send them here based on the, uh, evidence the the the, the uh, fake evidence that the u.s presented uh, this contorted uh, uh, interpretation of the uh, espionage act uh, she, so, so uh, she bought into that she only did not send him here because he they the reason would be that he was unhealthy and the conditions were too bad uh, in the u.s uh, prisons which they are uh, but, uh, but that was overturned by their, uh, their, uh, their appellate, uh, top appellate uh, court. 
And uh, so in the papers were signed. So now they're challenging the judge, the original judge, Baritzer's, um, finding that uh, the U.S. had grounds to uh, to uh, ex- have him extradited to the U.S. So that's that's that. There's that, and then there's a European uh, Human Rights Court that would be the next step uh, if uh, this uh, th- this underlying charge uh, is uh, not overturned. But does the U.K. belong to the European? To the European Court, it, it, it's a binding. They're not part of the European Union, but they are part of uh, oh, uh, of this uh, Human Rights Court. Okay, right, makes sense. So, as as we started at the beginning of of the show, we talk about the the issue of the journalists being censored uh, or having their uh, their uh, account blocked in social media. Uh, and it happened to many of our friends and many activists all over the world. So, how do you how do you see uh, that going? And and you know, do you have any magic uh, tools to to overcome that uh, that issue because it's becoming a really a big problem? Yeah. Well, listen, they got control of it. You have the social media giants. Uh, you know, the tech. Big tech that's uh, totally uh, monopolized by the U.S. government, the national security state. They work hand in glove. It's almost like uh, taxpayers are paying for uh, what what they dish out and uh, the restrictions, the monitoring, all of that. Yes. Well, you know, what did you think? That wasn't going to happen. The same thing with telephones. Uh, you know, they, they can monitor telephones. They can stop telephones. I had an interview with somebody the other day, and there was some odd dinosaur noise through the first 10 minutes of my interview uh, with the uh, the uh, UN representative from, from Russia. And so uh, there are ways to uh, interfere. There are ways to suppress um and a way to censor and it's certainly it's widespread right now and it's uh, very dangerous do, do i have an answer i i don't know people are <laughs> walking around with their cell phones eating fast food and uh, mesmerized by uh, football and baseball and you know, no, no, I know distracted. How, do we, how do we go reaching people if you have your icon block and you happen to to people who have like million people into their oh. social network and then they're overnight they cannot reach anybody. Well, most people can't because they're not uh, they're not uh, you know speaking out. Uh, you know they uh, they just go along with the ride. You know it's like most Germans uh, were not put in uh, jail because they all just went along with it. They were able to have conversations, go to the park, and all of that. Most Germans in the Third Reich, but you know they weeded out. Everyone, not just Jews, but communists, and and then uh, anyone that uh, that uh, labor uh, leaders, and and then you know everybody else went along. They were called the good Germans. So we're we're the good Germans right now, and those people content can continue on social media as long as they're not uh, challenging the state. Exactly. So, but but that's a problem of it. It's as soon as you start to to question anything. Uh, the war in, in Ukraine or, or the, the, the funding of the war in Ukraine or, or Assange or whatever, you're going to get, you're going to get, uh, you're going to get, start to get complications and difficulties on social network. So Listen, their business is war. I mean, we are at a permanent war state right now. And the major media is, uh, which is, have been co-opted for years and the corporate media, uh, they go along with it. They uh, they don't have any uh, dissent there. You get a one sided view. You just take this Ukraine, uh, you know, affair. There's only been one side of uh, that's been presented on all of these networks. They, they don't have any problem. They're not going to be uh, censored because they have self censorship, and you know they may as well be getting uh, their scripts written by the Department of Defense or the CIA. Well, they, I think they are because it's so much. It's the same thing over, every single day. How many times can you watch the same movie? Yeah. You know? I think it's the same story in Europe too. So it's, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't make it easier. No. Uh, 
Do you want to plug anything before we wrap up? Uh, do you have any um, any update? Something you want to people? To uh, know? You know, that's it. But you know, you can uh, listen to. Uh, my, you can go and get most of my interviews over the last couple of years on the Assange Countdown to Freedom dot com. I just spell it out: Assange Countdown to Freedom uh, dot com or RandyCredico.com dot com leads you to the same spot, and you can see. Look, go to episodes. You can see hundreds of interviews that I've done with all of these people that I just mentioned earlier and many more. Stefani Modizzi, Pamela Anderson. Uh, and, you know, I, I, there's so many. I can Ralph Nader uh, and uh, Ray McGovern, you know, Max Blumenthal. We'll yeah. have to get you on soon. All right. OK. Thank you so much. Enjoy your thank day. You. And thank you for being there. OK. Thank you okay. so much, Randy. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. That was your show face-to-face. -face, and keep please watching your news on Presenza.com. And uh, we hope to hear from you very soon. Thank you. Thank you.